from Chemnitz and let's leave no guy behind. Today I have a lot of leftover Derma Acid Dyes mixed with some Citric Acid Powder. And we are going to combine them onto the skein of Big O Yarn that started off in this gray color versus the bare one. The original color white is Dove Heather. And Big O is 50% Superwash Merino, 50% Nylon. It's bulky weight. And I really, really like it. So I have some colors left in some, this is some Peacock Blue, mixed with citric acid. I believe that I started with a quarter teaspoon of the color uh, mixed in with one teaspoon of white vinegar, not white vinegar. One teaspoon of citric acid powder. The bed bath is warming up, but I am just rinsing off my fingers before I go and grab some of the other dry powders. Uh, here I've got, what's the Derma Golden color? This is mostly, I believe, Derma Brilliant Yellow in the same proportions as the blue with a pinch of one of the golden yellow colors. And we are just going to be layering this on fairly heavy uh, because I don't want to leave any dye behind. And I've got a lot more yellow over here. Here is just some of that brilliant yellow on its own. Layering and layering. Don't want to leave any dye behind. Oh, and I have some of this is that golden color, which was way more dilute than the other ones. Okay, so far, so good. Now I could stop and wait. But I don't want to. Where are my tongs? Um, we are not that hot yet. But I already want to start adding some colors to the side. I don't mind if the colors spread out a lot here on the yarn. In fact, I welcome it. If there's a lot of uh, in addition to having like a lot of the citric acid that is in these dyes to begin with, this dye bath started with six cups of water, six tablespoons of white vinegar, and then I added another six cups of water to it. So we had a lot of acid in here. I think I might save this last little bit of blue for when I need it. And I imagine that I will, in fact, need it. So overdoing grays can be a lot of fun. Um, you start off with a color that is more muted overall, um, but it just gives like an extra oomph and intensity to what you are playing with. And there we go. I truly am trying to use up this color. And I'm lifting it again, placing it down. I'm actually surprised that it's not reading very green yet. Uh, we still see some elements of gray in here. But I'm going to use my tongs, especially around, see there on that tie, trying to expose those regions. So then we can come in with our blue and add some color. 
We just definitely are getting some speckles in here, some beautiful splotches of color. Okay, I'm going to turn the heat down because we are getting warm. We are getting nice and warm. Okay, I want to make sure to dry off my hand before going into the other colors. But I'm now sort of sprinkling this yellow number on. Same thing with this more gold. This is a situation where I do want to use up all of the color that I can. Uh, the name of the game here and leave no die behind. Um, ooh, this is fun. We are definitely, I feel like, well, I am wearing goggles. Ooh, we are nice and steamy. I'm going to reduce the heat some more so maybe you guys could see better. Um, I see a lot of green now, but I don't know if it's my goggles or if it's the haze, but it does feel uh, like the color has a haze to it, which I think is pretty fun. Okay, I am gonna go ahead and let this sit here for 15 minutes. When the 15 minutes are up, I'm adding four cups of water with four tablespoons of white vinegar. And I think I'm gonna heat for another 20 minutes just to be safe. I'm now going to turn off the heat completely. Yeah, our dye bath is looking really, really clear. Nevertheless, I am gonna leave this in here to cool off for a little while. And once it is completely cool, then we can wash it. Okay, let's wash this beautiful, beautiful, bulky yarn. We've got this really rich green that felt uh, almost hazy in the pan, but now just feels sort of mossy in a delightful way. I am going to add a little bit of some clear dish soap um, just to see if there's any bleeding. But it looks like that the color is all in our yarn. Woohoo! Um, so now I'm going to rinse out the stuff, put the yarn in my printer, and hang it up to dry. There will be a couple rinses um, to get that soap out, but yeah, we'll come back and take a closer look at the finished dry yarn. Here is the finished dry Big O yarn, and I am in love. There is so much depth and dimension in this color. You see the yellow and the green, and we've got speckles. Oh, there's probably at least three or four different green shades in here because of the way the colors layered on top of one another. When you have a lot of leftover powders after a day of dyeing, you could store them for another day. I don't personally like to dump dyes back into the containers they came from because of a risk of contaminating the color. If there's some granules of the blue and the yellow and I mix that into the stock container, then the color is not gonna be consistent anymore. But sometimes I'll use foil and then store my little cups inside a Ziploc bag for another day. However, I just love applying dye powder randomly to yarn to make these sort of tonal, variegated, random colorways. They're some of my favorite things to create, and having that leftover dye out is a wonderful excuse to just play. When I go to make a colorway like this a little more intentionally, if I'm working for the dye containers, then I'm, there's a lot more washing going on. I am Rebecca from Chemnitz, and I really hope that you enjoyed this video. Like, subscribe, turn on notifications. You guys know the drill by now. I police, <laughs> I publish new videos every Tuesday and Friday mornings, and you don't want to miss any of it. 
Make sure you go and check out the Chemnitz Patreon and the Chemnitz Creations Etsy shop. Uh, there's lots of different ways you can help support the content that you see here today. Uh, and you can find the links to everything in the video description. Thank you so much for watching, everyone.